groovy. Well, you finally did it. You broke that beautiful, shiny carbon fiber thing you bought. At first, you babied it, were paranoid of every scratch. Then you got careless, a little confident. And wham! You broke it. So it's garbage, right? Nope, it can be fixed. But is it as good, as safe? Would you trust repaired carbon fiber or would you think twice about it, eroding your own confidence every time you ride? Carbon fiber tends not to fail until it does. And when it does, it does so catastrophically. So unlike aluminum or steel, there's no precursor dent as an obvious warning of failure. There can be some fractures or little telltale cracks in delamination, but you might not be able to see those unless you're using ultrasound or thermal imaging. That being said, all is not lost. Carbon fiber can be repaired. It's extremely repairable, just not by you. It takes a certain type of mad scientist to do it right. The kind of person that when asked, what do you do, answers the call with, I make high speed dust. Why would you sneak up on me like that? I'm working. Bob says he'll only repair carbon fiber if he can make it stronger than the original was, and when done properly, not throw the performance characteristics out of whack, or just cause it to fail somewhere else because one section is now overbuilt. Like me, the beach is that way. I chose carbon fiber handlebars to break and repair because if we can reproduce a part of the cockpit, which is the point of failure between your stem and your sternum, then perhaps you'll be willing to apply those learnings across a variety of less consequential parts, like a chainstay. We can break one side, repair it, and then test it against its theoretical twin. That being said, it's smashy smashy time. What the hell did you do here? JRA, buddy. JRA. Oh. JRA. <laughs> JRA. Yeah, there's JSA too. What's that? Just sailing along, uh, just riding along. Yeah. There's all these JRAs. JDA, yeah. just driving along. <laughs> so, what the hell did you do here? Hey Rob! Hey! I need bars! Oh, right. They're done? They're done. Excellent. You can go smash them. Great! Uh, which side did you do? Wait. Uh, oh, well, so this one was just the sleeve. The way you guys broke this thing, it, you know, it's poorly broken. Like, you don't take... Poorly broken? It you, was expertly broken. You don't take bolt cutters to the face. <laughs> like, that won't happen in real life. Why didn't you fix this one? Well, um, so it was so, it was cut here, and if you can see the the taper of the center of the bar, it's tapering to a smaller inside and outside diameter. And for us to get a mandrel inside here, the mandrel will only fit tight right at the beginning of this tube, and it will be loose there. So therefore, it's going to want to rock inside. Okay. If this is a different part, like a chainstay or a down tube or some other functional part that was more expensive than a handlebar, 
the 100%, that's got a way bigger ticket item than a handlebar. It makes total sense to fix it. Yeah. Where it will be strong and light and, well, stronger than stock. It was really broken. Right. And this one was really broken. This was the better of the two, so I used it to do the nice repair. So you guys can take this back to the shop and unwrap that and then go nuts with your, your machine that you're so proud about. We'll make it look glossy. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> See you, buddy. So, with two out of three pieces of repaired carbon, I set off on my merry way to show how good Rob's work really is. Little did I know what lay in wait. Uh, we are at 30 centimeters. Wait, no, 20 centimeters. Three, two, one. Our test rig is simple. It drops the bars with eight kilogram weights attached to each side and goes up 10 centimeters every time to see at what point the bar fails. All Rob's repairs needed to do was not break before the other non-repair side of the bar. All right, here we are at 100 centimeters. On three, two, one. We are at 110 centimeters. 120. 130 centimeters. We are at 140 centimeters. We are at 150 centimeters from the impact and going down in three, two, one. Oh, Rob, I'm so sorry. It's probably because I did such a shitty job of breaking it. Oh. At a force of 3,727 newtons, the side of the first bar that Rob had repaired broke. We then went to try and break the non-repaired side of the bar and broke one of our weights instead. Oh! All right, here we are. We're gonna break our second bar here. Um, we're data recording and three, two, one. Oh, snap! And then Rob's second repair broke at 3,029 newtons. We tried to keep testing the unbroken side of the bar. One, and... Well, that's... Fuck. Both of Rob's repair jobs broke before the non-repaired side. I wanted to know more. Went down the street, picked up a brand new major manufacturer's Enduro level carbon fiber bar and put them on the test rig, hoping that they would give me some more insight. Testing a stock untouched, brand new shiny from the store uh, handlebar, carbon fiber. Not gonna tell you who made it. Anyways, three, two, one. <laughs> Nothing broke. Great. Three, two, one. <laughs> two, one, go. This is our last stop and the only other choice is to add weight. Going at 160 centimeters in three, two, one. Oh! Oh. Oh. It broke. It broke. It broke. I dove into the data from the accelerometers that were attached to the rig. You see, the retail bar experienced its maximum amount of force two drops before the drop that broke it. That's the opposite to what happened to all the other bars that broke under their maximum experience of force. That's good, that was our final test, but it totally tore the rack apart. Look at that. Great news, everybody. That meant that the last bar broke in part due to the fatigue of the bar, the fatigue of the rig itself, and the force being exerted on it. So what's actually going on? So Rob's fancy repair job experienced a force of 3,452 newtons on the impact before breakage and broke during an impact of 3,727 newtons. Rob's second quick and dirty repair experienced on the impact before breakage 2,505 newtons and 3,029 at the breakage point. And here's the thing that matters, a retail bar, the one you can go into a store buy and put your teeth on the line with when you ride. Its maximum force experienced was 2,560 newtons. Because of the deterioration in the rig on this final round and the fatigue in the bar, it broke at 2,480 newtons. And this is the takeaway. Repaired carbon fiber can be as strong or stronger 
than a brand new product sold off the shelf for the same intended purpose. I'm gonna get a little sanctimonious here, but this whole thing is why it's important for people to have more than a little cursory knowledge about the things they own and play with. I mean, a little understanding of your toys and what they are and how they work, and you'll be better for it. You don't have to be the person to maintain and repair them. That's what people like Rob are for. But you do owe it to yourself to detect a little bit of bullshit when someone says something to you like, carbon fiber is garbage and it gets a little damaged. Get that shit repaired. Go for a ride. One hundred. In three, two, one.